Golden rule for me, stops equal always half of targets. Let me ask you this, what do you measure first, your stops or your targets? So do you measure your stops and make your targets two times that, or do you measure your targets and make your stops half of that? Okay. Here's the problem I have with that personally. And again, I, I preface this by saying, if it works, do it. Um, that gives you a lot of randomness in your stop loss. If you do something like that. It gives you a lot of randomness because now your stops aren't actually at a, yeah, your, your stops aren't at a place that's actually safe. Your stops are not at a level that you think price action won't go to. Your stop is simply half your targets. So your stops in a random position, your stops just saying, hey, if my targets are 30 pips, my stops are 15 pips. But that 15 pip area doesn't necessarily mean you're in a safe place. That's that's my viewpoint of it. Um, does that make sense, guys? For for me, my philosophy on stop loss is this. My for me, my philosophy on stop loss is your stop loss should be at a place where you do not where you do not think the market should go. Right. I hide my stops behind structure because structure is the main part of my trading philosophy. I believe in structure. I believe in the power of it. If I identify a structure level and I'm taking a trade. I put stops below it because that level of structure tells me that, hey, if this level is violated, then I'm probably wrong. And I want to put my stop loss at a point where I'm probably wrong. If your stops are just simply, and this is why I was never a fan of like 10 pip stops or something like that, just a random, a random number. Well, your stops are 15 pips away from your entry. But what is 15 pips? Is that actually at a safe place in the market? Is it at a too safe place in the market, right? You can have two different scenarios, right? You could have a scenario where you have a level of structure, right? Let me just delete the chart work here, right? You could put yourself in a scenario where you have a level of structure, right? Major level of structure right there. And you've got a stop loss in that is half of blah, blah, blah. And now your stop loss is right here. And it's like, well, is this a safe place to put a stop loss or would a safe place be down here? Well, probably a safe place would be below that level of structure. On the other hand, maybe you have a situation where you have a really, really, really big target, right? You have a target that is a million pips wide or a million pips long and your stop loss is half of it, right? And now your stop loss is all the way down here. Well, this is your major level of structure. Why would you want to risk this much if you know that you're wrong up here. So in one case, you're not giving yourself enough breathing room because your, your stop loss isn't taking in a significant level of the markets into account. In another scenario, maybe you're giving yourself too much breathing room. Maybe you could be wrong earlier. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a trade. Remember the trade we, we looked at earlier on, um, was it Euro dollar? Where we had like a, a five to one risk reward. Maybe you have a situation like that where you can have a potential five to one risk reward, but because your rules say, hey, my stop loss is only half of my targets, well, now you have a two to one risk reward. And if that trade loses, instead of taking a very small stop, now you're taking a much bigger stop than necessary for what reason? But based on my back to this, if I enter at a very conservative area, stops have the target. Yeah, like I said, like I said, do it. If if it works, my philosophy on on traders is if it works, do it. If it works, do it. That's at the end of the day, do what works. I'm just saying for me, it doesn't make sense, and but that's just how my brain works. I need to have a reason. I need I need to have a reason for where targets are at. I need to have a reason for where stops are at. Um, if I don't have that reason, I, I don't feel comfortable about it. That's just how I work, right? I need, I need, if you give me a target, I need to be able to say, okay, my targets are here because of X, Y, Z. Or if I have a stop loss, my stop loss is here because of X, Y, Z. I've just never been someone that can be like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to use a 10 pip stop loss. So why is it 10 pips? I, I don't know.
So yeah, if it worked, do what you do. I don't care. At the end of the day, you trade what what you trade what allows you to be consistently profitable. Yeah, but my opinion is like, hey, I don't want to put myself in a position where my stops are right before a level or prior to a level that I think is kind of like my safety zone because now I'm not really giving myself a great chance at being safe in a trade. My, my stop loss are, are kind of not in a great place. I can easily be stopped out, but still be right. And in the other hand, I don't want to have a bigger stop loss than I need, right? If I only, if, if my stop only needs to be 20 pips away, I don't want to have it 50 pips away. That's just 30 pips of, of extra risk that I'm just throwing away for no good reason. If I know I'm wrong at 20, why do I want to risk 50? Oh, take care, Gregory. Um, Zach says, I would think you need to put your stop in a safe place like an ATR below structure, then understand what reasonable target is, which then lets you narrow down the kill zone for entry. Uh, going back to the, uh, uh, going, uh, I guess I'm, I'm kind of late reading the guess of this conversation. Yeah, I, you know, if I would do something, if I were to create, if, if I wanted to trade a rule like that, I would probably shift it in the sense that said, all right, well, my minimum risk reward needs to be two to one. And then within that two to one, I have the flexibility to do this and that. So it's just like you guys know I use ATR stop. I use a zone between one or two ATRs. And then within that one to two ATR stop, I can adjust it, right? Because if one ATR isn't in a safe level, but two ATR is, then I have the room to kind of move that stop loss back to a structural level that I feel is safe. So I would probably, I would adjust it that way if I want to use a rule like that. I would say I need a minimum two to one risk reward, but within that two to one, I can kind of finagle it or whatever based on X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. But, yep. So a good chance, just, just different views on the market, guys. That's all it is. Different views. If there was, if there was one way to trade that, that was profitable, everyone would be trading that, uh, that one way and the markets wouldn't move. It wouldn't even work anymore. So there's always going to be different opinions on the market. And what's cool about having a community here at Tier 1 Trading is you get to witness different traders doing different things for different reasons. And you get ideas where it's like, hey, maybe I like this idea. Maybe I like that idea. Maybe I like both these ideas. And you find some type of hybrid way in the middle that you can do it. Yeah, and the market, the market if everyone trades the same way, it actually wouldn't be profitable because... There would be zero liquidity in the market, right? Everyone would be looking for the same thing. No one would be doing the opposite, allowing you to get involved. So you would just, it, nothing would work. <laughs> nothing would work.